Well, hi guys. It is Monday, October the 4th. Uh, we got it figured out as far as the drive. And I'm going to try to explain this. Inside this casting, it is milled down and the bottom is milled flat. However, there is a 47 thousandths lip left in it all the way around. Okay. <coughs> old bearing to new bearing. Uh, this is the old one we took out. Okay. If you measured with a micrometer this distance where it's flat to this distance, this bearing is 487 thousandths across. The new uh, SKF bearing that we put in and used is 436 thousandths on this flat. It had more of a rounded edge. Uh, this presented us a problem. When you put the bearing in and it bottomed out, the gears on the gear set here were they did not line up and it was sloppy like you wouldn't believe so we knew something had to be changed all right I spent about a couple hours probably measuring with a mic getting everything figured out and the problem you run into was on this bearing flange on this edge it was rounded enough that it was going too far down so found a steel washer like so one inch bore twenty thousand thick this is not it this is uh, 15. And I put it between the gear and the bearing. Just like that. Put the bearing on. This goes kind of like that bearing on top and that goes in this way upside down to that okay got that all put together put it in work the gear back in the drive gear and it fit really 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 good the only problem was it had one tight spot when you turned it it turned real just easy get this one spot and it comes kind of turned out to be uh, there was a spot on the bottom I guess when it was pulled out of the engine that one of these got a little damage on it and made a tight spot but pulled it all back apart cleaned them up really good put it back together and the more I turned it the looser it got so put it back together the other thing I was worried about 
that gear set sets the upper part this section of it just like that sits under this plate so when you shim that if you bring it too high it hits the top so there's a lot of measuring going on to get this right but we got it figured out well, we got it all put together, uh, set, set the timing, and we fired it up uh, just before lunch. It is now uh, da, 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 about quarter to one. Kind of had to let this air out rather smoky it's not timed right so it did start and run it just didn't run right so we're going to tear into the timing on it now and see where everything is it should have been pretty daggone close but something's wrong so we're going to go through it again so, first start, it started and it did run. It just smoked like a freight train and wasn't running right. So, we'll be back here after a bit, guys. I uh, want to thank everybody for their comments about this drive. Uh, we still have not found any information anywhere or have found anybody that has the information on how to set this up uh, for the bearing style drive. Like I say, this is a 65 model tractor in 1960, late 65, early 66. They went to the bushing style. And these parts are not from here down are not interchangeable shaft is the same but the other parts are not under that drive so it makes it rather interesting uh, basically to find the information or to even find these parts like this because uh, you cannot I, re I repeat you cannot buy the thrust washers that go here the bushings bushings here bushings inside the brass gear this drive shaft nothing in this can you buy nor can you buy timing gear, the actual timing gears or their bushings. You cannot buy them from anybody. Nobody has them. I've gone through Perkins, two different Perkins dealers. Uh, whatever reason, in the United States, you cannot get these parts. So... Don't start saying, well, you should have called this guy or this guy. Nobody has those parts. Trust me. Uh, unless somebody has new old stock sitting on their shelf, these parts don't exist. In fact, if I had a new set of these thrush washers, I'd take them to my cousin and have him make a bunch of them. Because the last ones Harry got uh, came out of some place in Kansas. And it was supposedly the last ones known. And they were over $400 for that 
thrust washer right there. So if you can make them for a couple hundred bucks a piece, make some good money. <laughs> but, it's, well, even like that brass gear, can't buy that either. So, uh, hopefully the next time I videotape this, it'll be sitting here purring like a mouse chewing on cornbread. But right now, it's out of whack. So, we'll be back here in a bit, guys. Hopefully we'll have it running right. Down. Well, hi, guys. It's Tuesday afternoon. Uh... 1850 had a good bit of play up here on this shaft pulled the pump off and changed the drive shaft it's the one out of it and it was had a lot of slop in it so it has a good used one in it really good use when it's tight snug so now everything is hooked back up and we think it's in time well we're going to start it here in a few minutes so hopefully hopefully she will fire off and run uh, slop in here is gone. You put oil, get oil on these gears, and the slop disappears out of these. So the only thing that was left is that shaft, that drive shaft, or this. That is a little bit loose. It's a one out of mine. That's a lot tighter. So, this could have been the problem. I won't know for sure till we get her started up. But it was for sure this gear was a problem. This drive shaft was a problem. And that bearing. I wish you could feel that. You can just feel a little bump. Bump, bump, bump in it. So, we'll be back here in a bit, guys. Okay, guys. At this point in the day, I had called the guy that rebuilt the injector pump and told him there's just something wrong with it. Harry talked to him on the phone, told him what it was doing. So I pulled the pump back off and took the special tool with me back down. Uh, I went down and got it that morning and it was like 2.30 in the afternoon. Uh, took off with it. It's a good... Oh, it's a good hour plus drive down there. And drop the pump off to him. And, well, talk to him a bit about what it was doing, how it was running, how it sounded, slobbering, uh, the smoke that just burned your eyes up. And it's just everything 
it was done. Um, so all I can do is leave it in his hands and let him go over it. And he said he would call me as soon as it was ready. So I'm off to make a, about a 45 mile trip to drop the pump and the tool back off and hopefully, hopefully, it's right when it goes back on. Because I know Harry is getting really, really tired of this thing being in the shop. And I'm tired of it being there too. I want the thing back running. So hopefully, hopefully, we'll see what happens in the morning. So hang on. We'll be back. Well, hi guys. It is Thursday morning, the 7th, I believe. I'm in an undisclosed unlo location after picking the injector pump back up. Now, I had come down and got the special tool and we timed everything out again. Put the injector pump back on and it just was not right. It, it, it would start, it went idle, but that's all it do. Uh, you start revving it up and it start missing and spitting and doing all kinds of crazy crap. Smoking bad. Oh, so Harry said, let's pull the injector pump off the motor outside. Stick on it. See what it does. So that's what we did. I pulled an injection pump off a motor that's been sitting outside for 10 years. And uh, we cleaned her up. It was a little bit on the stuck side. Shot some PB blaster in it. Worked it with a pair of vice or pliers. Got her freed up. And we put it on. Bled the pump out. Left the fuel lines on top loose because it still had fuel in it and it was kind of nasty. So we just cranked it over and let it shoot out. Uh, after a couple minutes of doing that, Harry said it's got all pink fuel coming out. So we hooked her all back together. Hit the key, she fired up and ran like a mouse chewing on cornbread. So we knew right then and there that there was something wrong with that pump. So last night, I brought it to this undisclosed location, back to the man that rebuilt it, and told him everything. Well, he called me this morning, after making two trips down here yesterday, called me this morning, said it's ready to go. So, come down here, this rainy Thursday morning and pick the said injector pump back up. So now I'm headed 40 miles, 45 miles, back to McHenry's. We're going to put it on and see how it runs. Uh, it ran great yesterday. I mean, it ran really good yesterday. So, if this is right now, she should run even better today. So, we'll see you next time, guys. See it well. We'll see you in a bit. So, hang on. We'll be right back. Well, hi, guys. It is uh, 20 after 12. Uh... The pump is reinstalled on the tractor now. 
the pump that was on it, which is this one, is off. Of that 354 parts engine that's locked up and yes it did come off of it okay. uh, we had done everything yesterday with uh, that special tool got everything on the engine set I pulled number one injector. We verified top dead center on the flywheel is top dead center up here. I uh, had to take the gear loose here, pull the gear out, and go one tooth. It's a little off. Um, put it back together. I put the tool in, it just dropped in, and it was dead on the money. So, put this injector pump back on it, started it up. It started, it would idle, smoke like hell, a lot of white smoke. And you start revving it up, and it'd pop, crack, spit, cough just wasn't running right so took the injector pump off the motor out there found that it was stuck put it in the vise got it freed up PB blaster here and there put it on this thing uh, bled it out left these all the top lines loose to where Cranked it over till we got pink fuel squirting out of them because it had old fuel in it. Hooked all the lines up, fired it up, and this thing ran beautifully. I mean, you you just can't believe the difference uh, how it ran. Oh, we run it for a while. I took it up the road about a mile, come back, ran laps outside over there. I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. Thing ran like a top. And we knew this injector pump, something was wrong with it. So we called the guy that rebuilt it, told him what everything we did. He said, well, bring it on back. I said, what time are you there to today? Because it was about 2.30 at this point. He said, we're here to seven. I said, I'm that well, then I'm on my way. Went over there, dropped it off about 5 o'clock, and eight, 5 after 8 this morning, I got a phone call saying it was ready. So, kind of wanted to sleep in today, but I didn't. Uh, got a shower, took off driving, and it's about an hour drive down there. Uh, easily an hour got it brought it back just switched this in the last 45 minutes got here about 11:30. got them switched out got it bled out now it's ready to start for the first time on this pump set right uh, this pump to that pump you have a difference of, this does not have the baffle or whatever you want to call it, that this one does. This is the only difference between the two pumps. They're both RR67 pumps. Uh, this one is off a little newer engine than mine. Mine's an 80,000 serial number. This is an 85,000 serial number. So, they're just 
probably out of the same year tractor, more than likely. But with that one, it ran like a top. Couldn't ask it to run any better. So I'm going to wait around here a few minutes and until Harry gets back off lunch. Then we'll fire this thing up, see what she sounds like. And hopefully it'll be put the tin back on and she's ready to go home. Uh, while I was here, uh, Harry did have to put a new hydraulic pump in it. Which means you take all this part. That's why the head cab had to come off. The uh, seals inside let loose. And they got the impellers. And it, it chewed it up. Nothing to do about it. But luckily it was under warranty. So thankful for that. <laughs> So now I can say and we change a hydraulic filter in it too at the same time. Uh, hydraulic pump's new. The filter's new. This filter and housing are new. Like half an hour run time on it uh, found out that the check valve in here was bad I didn't know there was a check valve in there and Harry didn't either but there is we thought it was just a fitting adapter but it's not but it's new it's this whole top's been replaced in fact old one sitting right here with the line, line was changed too. Uh, this is out of mine gear. It's the bearing out of it. Uh, da, 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 da. There's been a lot of done to this tractor, and there's been a lot of things done to the engine that truly weren't necessary because of an injector pump set wrong when it was rebuilt so that's uh, unfortunate to say the least but it's not unheard of um, Harry's run into this before you get a pump rebuilt and it comes back and it's just Something is just not quite right. Gotta get all these all this shit sprayed down so it can dry and if you got a leak you can find it easy. <laughs> Go through a lot of that when you're working on an injector pump. You need it cleaned up anyway. Um, yeah, there's been a lot of time, a lot of money that was spent out in the, having service calls because this thing just was not running right out in the field. And it all goes back to be the pump not set for this tractor. Plain, pure, and simple. That was uh, somebody got the wrong numbers and set it up, and it, but it wasn't for this. So it happens. But I now know proof positive from this line and this line to this filter. To these lines, to the other side, the fuel pump, and the lines back to the tank, there ain't a damn thing wrong with it. It is right as rain. 
timing wise is dead on the money one top dead center there our timing marks line up this shaft is timed correctly to this gear and the drive gear underneath has a slot cut that matches up with the outer ring here that's under this lip it all lines up injector pump is dead lined up uh, it should be right so a few minutes we'll fire this bad boy up and see how she runs now she better run right I'll put it that way <laughs> but I can tell you now for a fact I can take off and change the injector pump on one of these in 45 minutes <laughs> I've had lots of practice <laughs> so, we'll be back here in a bit guys so hang on okay guys moment of truth it has not been started since I switched the pump let's see what it does
Okay, guys, it's Friday, the eighth. Pulled the injectors out. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oddly, soot, soot, clean, somewhat clean, soot, clean. We're going to test them. I have a theory. We'll see if it's right or wrong. So, yeah, that's the injector pump. I really wish that I got video of it running because you would not have believed how good that engine ran with that injector pump. It purred. No matter what RPM, no matter how long it ran, it just purred. It sounded great. Put mine back on and it's it slobbering. Uh, you can see the splatter marks in there, up there on the hood. Kind of see the the you know, was running down the manifold. And it didn't do that till after I put the pump back on. So, uh, one difference between this injector pump, the one over there, is the pressure that it's running at. This is, you know, new head, new rotor, everything in it's rebuilt. That well, it's sit outside for 10 years, and it's untelling how long it's been since it was run. So, no doubt it's got weaker fuel pressure on it. But, we'll see what happens here in a bit. Oh, I'm telling you, this is fun stuff. Well, we'll be back. 